Welcome back to Minitab Assignment 1, Help, Part 2. In the first part, we went over how to begin your Minitab assignment. We downloaded one of the data files, we copied what happened in the sessions window and put it into our document, and then we were beginning, we were ready to start our problem. So if we look in our document that we made so far, we had our response in the sessions window, we copy and pasted it, and now we're ready to do the problem. But if you look at the problem we have, the problem comes in three parts, A, B, and C. And remember, one of the directions says to number it and to order it in the way that the problem comes. So we have to make a little adjustment. We're going to get rid of this A in the response window because that's not what part A of this particular problem wanted in the stat portal problem. A wanted the histogram. So that's what we're going to keep as A is doing our histogram. And now we're going to get rid of that so that we can now just put our histogram right in here. So now it's time to take our data and make the histogram. But when we opened up our data, the one thing we didn't do, which is one of the first things you should always do when you open up Minitab, is you want to enable the commands. Now, if my, I had been in the, the worksheet part of my Minitab and I tried to enable the commands, I wouldn't see it. If you see this kind of stuff, you know that you aren't in the right window to get in the sessions. I just left-clicked. This became dark blue, and now if I go into Editor, it will now allow me to enable the command. So now I'm ready to do my histogram. Now you can either use commands that you find in the Minitab Help that we have for you, or you could do the drop-down menus and just do the graph. If you choose this, then there's going to be some cleanup that you're going to have to do. So if I do this, I say, OK, great, I want this variable, ratios, because that's where the data is. I hit OK. This will be the default Minitab histogram. First of all, look at the midpoint. I mean, look where we don't even have cut points. We have, um, we have our little cut, um, hash marks in the midpoint, and we don't want that. That's not good when we have continuous data. We want them at the cut point. And also, we wanted whole numbers for the cut points. And they wanted 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we needed six classes. So there's going to be some changes in here. And both of these titles are not good. So we're going to have to change some things around. So first of all, let's do the easy one. Let's change the title. So I'm going to put in our, our title, which is always going to be distribution of. So distribution of ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids for the 30 foods in this particular sample. That would be a good and very descriptive title. And that means that our label here is also, it needs some help too. We want to do ratio, and tell them it's the ratio of what? Of omega-3 to omega-6. And there is no units for this because a ratio would cancel out the units, so we don't have any units. But we did tell them that it's a ratio. We are in a frequency because it didn't say whether it wanted relative or frequency, so we'll just leave it at a frequency distribution. But again, we have trouble now with our bins. It's wrong. So we put our um, cursor right there at the x-axis, left click twice. And the first thing we want to do is change our binning. We want them to be at the cut points. Then we want to now put the position of our tick marks to be at 0 all the way through 6. So we'd say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we've got our position of our ticks, but now we have to, in the binning, we have to let them know the number of intervals that we want. We want 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to 6. So we want not 9 intervals, but just 6 intervals. And if we hit OK now, we should now have a graph that gives us a nice, histogram, even um, the, the class width being 1, and evenly distributed, obviously, with whole numbers for our tick marks, which are at the lower class limits. And now this is a good histogram. Now it's time to copy this histogram and paste it into our document. Now, since we're already in the histogram, if we weren't, it wouldn't be colored. It would be hidden underneath. But here it is. It's colored. I'm going to do Control. C to copy this, and now I'm going to put it into my document. And so I'm going to put the histogram right in here by Control-V, or I could have right-clicked and pasted, 
and I will now have my graph inside my Minitab document. Once I have that, I'm going to click inside this graph twice, because what I want to do is I want to make it smaller. I want it to fit inside my document. So I'm going to see a blue dotted line turn up around this document. So now that I have that, I'm going to go in here and just make it a little bit smaller, more manageable inside my document. Now it's time to move on to the next part. The part B says, um, what is the shape of the overall distribution? How many of the 30 food oils have a, um, more omega-3 than omega-6? What does this distribution suggest about the possible health effects of modern food oils? So you're going to take that, look at your distribution, answer these questions in complete sentences. If you do not, you'll have points taken off. And then Part C says, can, um, Table 1.4 contains those entries, what we see in Minitab, for several fish oils. How do these values support the idea that eating fish is healthy? So answer both those questions, B and C, in complete sentences. So you'll go on and you'll answer them and put them in complete sentences right underneath that histogram. Here's Part 2's question. So the first thing we see in, part, in um, A is that we have to copy and paste the responses in the sessions window. So we actually made that part of this problem because it's the one that we made, so we could. Then we're going to do, for Part B, we're going to make a pie chart. For Part C, we're going to make a relative frequency bar graph. And then D and E are going to be answering questions in complete sentences. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy this and start um, forming our question in our Minitab uh, document. So I put that in there, and now I'm ready to do Part A. So I go here to make a Part A up above. So here's our problem, and now it's time to open up data set number two. And now I'm going to have to um, copy and paste the results in my Minitab file and enable the commands. Although I believe they're already, they've already been enabled, but we'll just make sure. See, they're already enabled on that particular file. So now I can either do Control-A to highlight everything, then Control-C to copy it and go into my document, or I could have just right-clicked and said copy, one or the other. But, so, and now paste. So I pasted it. And now, like I said, I like to highlight and just do some formatting that I like to put in there. And I'm going to scooch it over like that, and then change the color to say, hey, yeah, I answered it. And more than likely, I would have put these answers, I would have put them both in blue also, just to let myself know that those are the things that I, I answered the questions. Again, we don't um, expect that you give us things in color, but this is more for you to, to make sure you realize that you had done this. And this one had a lot in its sessions window. Um, now, part B was to do a pie chart. And if you look, we're pretty explicit about that. We say we want to make sure that it has proper titles and labels in each category displayed and the percent. So we're very specific what we want. So how would we do that? Well, again, you can use your Minitab command files to do this. So let's say that we did do that. So we're going to go into Blackboard. And we're going to say, oh, okay, let's get our commands. So let's go into this Minitab command and help because I want to do it. I want to custom make it. So I'm going to go into here for Chapter 1, 2, and 3 and 8, but all I need is the commands that were from Chapter 1 for my pie chart, and here they are. So I could literally take this, but the difference here is I've got to change this. I don't want to say distribution um, for the 50 patients. I don't want it for blood types. I want it for colors. Because this is, if you look in here, it's only 100. And now this should be a perfect pie chart. All done and nice for us. The title should be good. All the colors and the percents there, perfect. Or you could do the drop down um, for the pie chart and do it that way. We select it, hit OK. And then when you do this one, it's going to give the default, but we can change that very easily. We can um, go into, you right click, you want to add slice labels, and we want the percent and the category name. And we'll have that, and then change the title. And then hit Enter, and we're finished. Well, this ends Part 2. We're going to go into Part 3, where we're going to finish up the problem. Thank you.